news, events, sports. Same time, same place, right in the heart of Isla Vista. UCSB TV is serving UC Santa Barbara and the surrounding community with real journalism. Hello and welcome back to UCSB TV, the newscast bringing you all of the news, events, and sports in and around Isla Vista and the surrounding community. I'm UCSB TV producer Alexandra Goldberg. Today is Wednesday, March 1st, and as we near the end of the quarter, the campus community is heating up, and we have some special highlights today. The Isla Vista community celebrates a Zero Waste Festival, a recent Associated Students event all about achieving that zero waste lifestyle. Then men's volleyball has our sports spotlight today, talking about their competitive season this year. But first, the UCSB science community is touching down in the high Canadian Arctic for a special expedition to test Martian life technology. The expedition taking place this summer will test the physical and mental fitness of a group of students from UCSB as they undergo an imitation trip to Mars, researching how technology can discover a potential source of life in outer space. News anchor Rebecca Fairweather has that story. Mars, fourth planet from the sun and second smallest planet of the solar system. The science community has been dedicated to exploring the red planet and discovering Martian life for six decades that blossomed from NASA's completion of its first successful flyby mission in 1965. Since then, NASA has completed 129 missions dedicated to the exploration of Mars. This growing interest in the discovery of life on Mars has sparked an international team of students here at UCSB to take a giant leap for mankind. The Alpha Mars Analog Astronaut Team is setting their sights on Devon Island in the High Canadian Arctic to conduct research that will aid in the discovery of Martian and extraterrestrial life. I recently spoke with two future space explorers, Chris Temby and Yael Brinjagard Bialik, who are looking for UCSB support in their planetary pursuits. Could you please uh, introduce yourselves and describe a little bit about the work that you're doing? Yeah, hi, I'm Chris Temby. I'm an undergraduate physics student at the University of California, Santa Barbara. I'm Yael Bringegaard Bialik. I'm also a student at UCSB. We are part of a team called Alpha Mars that is attempting to uh, do analog, Mars analog uh, research in the Canadian Arctic uh, with the hopes of coming up with new technology to understand how to find life on Mars. So we're doing analog research on Devon Island either this summer or the following summer. Uh, we plan on doing physics, geology, and lots of astrobiology sort of research for life detection on Mars. What are the conditions of the high Canadian Arctic that make the land so similar to Mars territory? What is Mars? It's a desert that has very little water. Uh, it's extremely cold and uh, those things we can definitely get on environments on Earth. However, what we can't simulate is the lower gravity because Mars is smaller than Earth and also Mars has a much smaller atmosphere so we can't simulate that unless we're in a laboratory. Devon Island, um, which is a polar desert in the Arctic tundra that um, has very limited precipitation, very similar to Mars. We're gonna go to a place called Houghton Crater which is on Devon Island. It's one of the more intact uh, impact craters on Earth. Going to the impact crater is a good analog for Mars because there are so many craters on Mars. Um, so what are you and reputable scientists hoping to learn from this expedition? So one of the things we're planning on testing is this life detection device our team leader Jan has developed called ALF. So ALF is, it stands for the Agnostic Life Finder. The idea is that agnostically, meaning that um, it doesn't matter like what we know about life, it, our, this practice should be able to determine life anywhere in the universe, regardless of its origin. Basically, we're going to be field testing it uh, with the hopes of actually sending it to Mars to do that work. Uh, we'll, be, we'll have EVA suits, so just like on Mars, we'll be able to do some of this field work. Uh, in addition to that, we have a lot of psychological and physiological goals that we plan on pushing ourselves to achieve and really studying what happens in this sort of two-month expedition uh, 900 miles from the North Pole. 
this experiment will be testing your extreme physiological as well as psychological conditions, um, as well as isolating you from kind of the outside world in a sense. How challenging do you think this expedition will be? So the isolation is pretty inherent to any sort of expedition field work for this long period of time. Uh, a lot of us are aspiring astronauts. So that isolation, while for sure it will be a challenge, uh, we are looking forward to kind of I guess overcoming and getting used to that challenge. Uh, astronauts obviously have this sort of uh, challenging, very time intensive environment. Uh, we are trying to replicate that as close as possible. You described in your GoFundMe that all fundraise money will go directly to test innovative Martian life detection technology. Should we be concerned about finding life on Mars and how will it help shape Earth's civilization? GoFundMe um, and all fundraising that we're doing is an attempt to basically fund our trip out there. We are developing, like we've said previously, the ALF device. And the goal is to um, use this technology, this innovative Martian life detection technology, to better understand like what it means to um, detect life anywhere in the universe, even on Earth. Personally, I think that detecting life elsewhere in the universe would be the biggest scientific discovery of all time. So I really think that it would have a profound impact on the philosophical perspective that humans have on who we are and also like as your own self and also who we are as in interpreting another person's being. Being able to understand that we're not alone, we would do better in taking care of the home that we do have. Is there life in space, any form of life in space? Uh, my answer is Undoubtedly yes, which granted undoubtedly is not necessarily, you know, we don't know for sure. Um, I do think it's very possible we'll be finding microbes, um, very small bacteria sized life. I do think that there is other intelligent life out there. We've barely just started looking out in the universe um, for anything. It's signs of life, signs of living and past, and also techno signatures like radio waves. Who's to say when it'll happen, if it'll happen? But um, I think it's a pretty solid bet to say with just the sheer size out there, it seems likely that we'll find something at some point. Our Instagram account is Alpha Mars Terranauts, uh, and our GoFundMe link is on that page, and you can find the link to our website as well as a bunch of other links and meeting our crew members. As Gauchos shoot for the stars and set their sights on Mars, we thank you for your continued support from Earth and beyond. With UCSB TV, I'm Rebecca Hotalo Fairweather, your news anchor. That was Rebecca Fairweather who sat down with the Alpha Mars Analog astronaut team to talk about their upcoming expedition. And up next, sports anchor Hannah Abergell sat down with men's volleyball athlete Donovan Todorov to chat about his senior year season. Hey Gauchos, Hannah Abigail here with Donovan from our UCSB men's volleyball team. Donovan, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, yes, my name is Donovan. I'm a senior middle blocker for the men's volleyball team and my major is psych and brain science. I'll be graduating in the spring this year. And Donovan, can you kind of give us a background on what made you go into volleyball? How did you start? What your inspiration was? Uh, so I was always playing soccer growing up and Freshman year, I decided to try out volleyball. It ended up being pretty fun and then decided to stick with it after that since I got pretty good and now I'm here. Yeah, last year you had a great season. You got two-time Defensive Player of the Week by the Big West. You got the AVCA All-American Honorable Mention and you even got the Big West First Team Mention as well. How does that make you feel with all those awards? Uh, pretty good. We had a great year last year and hoping to build on that from last year and have a better year this year. And as a player here, what are your main goals for yourself? Have the best season possible, graduate with connections that I'll have for the rest of my life within my teammates and the coaches and staff and all the former Gauchos, and just have fun while doing it too. Yeah, you mentioned you were a senior, it's coming to an end. I mean, you just started volleyball, but it is coming to an end. How does that make you feel overall? Uh, pretty sad, but I always have my teammates as friends for life, so. The last time the UCSB men's volleyball won the Big West was in 2021. How can we take that win and bring it to this year's win? Uh, we just have to work a lot harder, and we've had two weeks between our last match and next Wednesday match, so we've been, we had some time to focus on the things that need a lot of work and feeling a little better out there, so we'll see when Big West play starts next week. Yeah, as you mentioned, Big West starts next week versus UCSD. What are we most looking forward to? 
just playing the best teams in the country because Big West is usually composed of all the best teams that usually play in the finals. Last year was Hawaii and Long Beach, which were the two best teams, and they were both in the Big West. So just getting some good competition and being able to beat teams is what I'm most excited for. Yeah, like you mentioned, Long Beach is coming up right after UCSD. What changes will be made from last year to this year? Uh, well, we have a new setter, Jack, transferred from Hawaii, and he's an absolute beast. So our team is mostly the same from last year, but we also have a very deep roster with a bunch of younger guys looking for spots, which is great because it always keeps practices competitive. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and last few questions, Donovan. Why did you ultimately choose UCSB to play for? Uh, I always wanted to come to SB growing up. I was born in Santa Barbara and then moved to San Diego when I was really young. So this was always like a dream school of mine. And I'm lucky that I got to make that happen through volleyball. And what would you say your kind of pre-game routine or ritual would be? Uh, I would say wake up in the morning. We usually have our servant pass around 10 a.m. Do that, go back home. Get some Chipotle, usually, take a nap, stop by Ivy Deli on the way, get a Celsius, and then come to the gym, start warming up. All right, Gauchos, you heard it here from Donovan from our UCSB men's volleyball team. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Go Gauchos. Go Gauchos. This upcoming week is one of the busiest of the year across all sports for the Gauchos, but there are a few events to keep an eye on in particular. Both our basketball teams score off against Hawaii on Saturday in their regular season finales with the men's team playing at home. This will be the last chance to watch UCSB basketball at the Thunderdome. We'll be there and, you, and you'll want to be there too. Later in the week, the Big West basketball tournament begins where both our teams' March Madness campaigns will begin. Additionally, our volleyball, tennis, track, baseball, softball, golf, and water polo teams are in action this week as well. We would like to give our Gaucho of the Week award to Amelia Honor of Women's Tennis, who was awarded Big West Women's Tennis Player of the Week this week. This is her third time winning the award this season and the fifth time of her career. Congratulations, Amelia, and keep up the good work. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to keep supporting our Gauchos. For UCSB TV, I'm Ryan Greenberg. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. That was Ryan Greenberg with the Sports Recap and Hannah Abergel, who chatted with men's volleyball athlete Donovan Todorov about his senior year and his entire volleyball career. Good luck for the rest of the season, and we're rooting for you. And up next, the Zero Waste Festival put on by the AS Zero Waste Committee included various environmental and other on-campus organizations. The event had activities for the community to learn how to become zero waste. Events anchor Priscilla Flores has that story. This week at UCSB, we are at the Zero Waste Festival where we can learn how to be more eco-friendly. Let's go take a look. So today we're holding the Zero Waste Festival, which the goal of it is to highlight how our campus is tackling zero waste and reducing our waste, how our community and just ways to get involved and take these practices hopefully that you learn at home. We have a bunch of campus and off-campus organizations, Environmental Affairs Board, Surf Riders here, Isla Vista Co-op, uh, Department of Worms, AS Recycling Committee, Eco Vista, Compost Collective, basically a whole mosh posh of everyone in the community who's trying out. Today we have a zero waste art contest, which is really cool. We got a bunch of submissions, which I'm really excited about. Um, we also have a refill station, which is super neat. Um, so it's a bunch of soap and laundry detergent that people can come get a reused plastic jar container, um, decorated if they want, and then fill it up with soap. And then we have a bunch of other stuff, just tabling interactive activities, a bunch of like free zero waste giveaways. My personal like best tip for zero waste is just always thinking like before you throw something away in general, like how could I use this for something else? Could I use it for art? Could maybe somebody else want it? Could somebody else want to repair it and use it for themselves? I think that's my biggest thing because so much of what we throw away somebody else could want, you could use for something else, you end up like buying something similar later on. Um, one of my favorite services is, or I guess it's not service, but um, UCSB free and for sale, hopefully. I feel like we need a program that's just for free stuff, but I love whenever I have something that I'm like, I don't want anymore, but somebody could definitely use this just posting on there and even the most random things, like somebody would love it and make something cool out of it. Um, so that's my favorite. There's also a bunch of thrift shops in the area to donate your stuff. And I feel like there's always some cool drive and organization on campus doing something to collect goods people don't want and 
give them to people who need them, want them, could use them. We hope this is as fun and informational as it was for us. We'll see you next time. I'm Priscilla Flores with UCSB TV. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's newscast. And as always, we'll be here reporting on everything you need to know about Isla Vista and the surrounding community. With UCSB TV, I'm Alexandra Goldberg, and we'll see you next time.